walk in way and you truly leave another way. This is what I want, this is what I want to encourage some of you. Uh, that's what your intimate time with God's going to be like. You're going to be going into that closet. Yes, Lord. Literally, Abigail, I've seen you when you was praying, like you was praying over there, you stepped into a realm that you'd never been in before. And I see your prayer life go in there. And even the things God was opening your eyes to see a while ago, there was different, just like visuals that He was showing you. And you began to walk in them. I hear the Lord saying, I'm calling you in this season to steward those. In other words, He's saying, I'm not showing you just to show you them. He's saying, I want you to press in and seek me about them. I'm going to give you the ability. And I'm making your tongue into an arrow that when you begin to pray and release, you've seen arrows, didn't you? As you begin to pray and release, he said, I've made you an arrow and I will haka ta brike kundo. That I will, I will use you to take things out from afar. He, I hear him even saying, I'm going to position you on the wall um, to take things out that would come against the ministry. The ministry of reconciliation. I'm not saying R.I. The ministry of reconciliation. I'm talking about the body of Christ um, that's truly warring as one across you. You will start to get things. You know, you're actually going to begin to have dreams. And you will take and meet people in the dreams, in the spirit realm. And God will show them. And you will again, you will know them. But you'll begin to pray. And God will give you a burden. And, and, and it will it'll be, it'll be down the road that you will, you'll meet these people. You'll act, they may even walk into corporate settings of where you're at. And, and, and what God's doing is introducing you into the level of intercessory that he's called you to. He, he hasn't just called you to be prophetic. He's saying, look, I have, I'm sharpening you to take and penetrate the darkness, the, uh, the, the systems that's even come against you and your family. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. <laughs> so, tonight... I'm going to talk about responsible sons and daughters. We come together as for regional prayer every Tuesday. And I just thank God for what I'm seeing in y'all's prayer lives. Y'all truly, um, y'all are praying from heaven to earth. And we're seeing literally, we've seen um, from where the cartel has been broke up. We've seen where all these drug busts has taken place. We're seeing economy come to this land. This place was stagnant years ago. Um, you know, it's one thing to see that God wants to make something prosperous, but it's another thing when you stand and you pray and you watch the fruit of your prayers bring that. Not that you did it, but you come in agreement with what God showed you. See, He don't show you something just to show you it. He shows you it because He is sitting on the throne. His Son has all authority as you as praying, but He's delegated that authority to us as sons to take and see the demonstration of His love and His glory come to earth. So I want to pray. Uh, I want to pay, uh, uh, speak to you tonight about responsible sons and daughters. We're going to come out of Acts 6. Father God, I thank you for your word. I come in agreement right now as your sons and daughters have already prayed and pushed through. Father God, I thank you, Father God, that your word is alive and active and it shall go forth and it shall do its work. I thank you, Father God, for the ones that's watching online, the ones that's in this room, the ones that will watch it on replay, that the power of Jesus Christ, Father God, begins to, Father God, take them into new realms of your love and glory, new new areas, Father God, of ownership, new realms, Father God, of walking, Father God, mature and responsible. I prophesy maturity and responsibility ability over your sons and daughters in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Acts 6 and 1. So we've seen this great revival. A lot of times uh, we hear, man, we need to move as the first church moved, right? And I think there's truths in that. But y'all think the first church, other than because of Jesus Christ, that was perfect? You think they had, didn't have any problems? Any situations? Amen. Amen. Well, Acts 6 and 1 opens up that way. They had a situation. Amen? It says, Now at this time, while the disciples were in the NSAB, now at this time, while the disciples were increasing in number. Amen? A disciple is one that's disciplined. A disciple is one that follows. A disciple is one that, that ain't just saying, Hey, I want to go taste of something and get me a little bit of that. A disciple says, Hey, I want to go with everything I've got. A disciple will say, You know what? In the midst, they, they start to truly understand He needs more than a Savior. He, they understand He is Lord. 
Lord. Lord means that he is the king upon the kingdom and that he will guide and direct. It actually says the responsibility of Holy Spirit. It calls him Lord in the Bible. Paul breaks that down. But with that, he goes on to say this. Now at that time when the disciples were increasing in number, a complaint arose on the part of the Hellenistic Jews against the native Hebrews because their widows were being overlooked in daily um, serving of food. Amen. Now the the uh, we can look at this and we could uh, we could say you know what. We can be super spiritual here and be like, you know what? Look, they just need to take and pray that the, that the loaves shall be multiplied. I believe 100% that that should be taking place. But you got to meet people where they're at. Sometimes or whatever you do. Look, the, the, the true wineskin is family. And see, we see two different parts. It talks about a native and it talks about a Hellenistic um, uh, Jew here. So these are, we see that there is a different area that they're from. Maybe uh, a, a different geographical location, right? Because at this time, the Gentiles haven't been, the revelation of them being engrafted in had come forth. Revivals broke loose or whatever in different regions of Jerusalem, of, the, uh, of that area. Does that make sense? When they spoke in all those languages, it'd be like um, the, the different languages. Maybe dialect of New York sounds different than the dialect of Georgia, right? Um, uh, you take um, go into Spanish countries or down into Mexico. They speak in different language, but they still are Hispanic, right? And so what I'm getting at here, we got to understand context with the Word of God. Uh, but with this, it's saying, look, we could be super spiritual, but Peter, Peter and them said, look, we need to handle this. What do we got to do? Well, what's a complaint? It's a murmur, murmuring, muttering, a secret debate. A secret displeasure not openly avowed. Now when we have a situation like this, we post it on Facebook, we post it over here, we do whatever we want to do over here, and we ain't truly worried about feeding people. If we are, we're feeding them just to take a new line. There's no connection with the people that's feeding and the people that's trying to support. Does that make sense? We got so many divisions in the body of Christ right now. Uh, and, and, but the cool thing is we can see we have an answer and the first church faced it. What's happening? The authenticity and the glory and the power of Jesus Christ is now here. It is bringing multiplication. In the midst of multiplication, what are we going to do? Because this is what's going on. If God, look, if God poured out 5,000 to get saved right now, what would we do? It's just something we've got to think about. Because God, when He pours out His glory, people get saved. Think about this. People that don't know no different and they go to church on Sunday and they've been in this loosey-goosey gospel. I'm just going to preach the Word tonight uh, along with teaching or whatever and live in this loosey-goosey gospel. Just go to church on Sunday. Um, grace, grace, grace. And they ain't, life ain't being changed. When God, the God of heaven touches your life, there's things that's changed. There's, you transform. There's a continual transformation that takes place. Does that make sense? So, not living how I want, but living in the will of the Father is what I'm getting at. Think about that. If God sat down in one big place that's more like a social club than truly the, the, uh, the authenticity of God sat down. Think about it. If that happened, they could be thousands saved in that moment. The true fear, the ones that, that, that they, they believe, they, have, they, 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 they uh, uh, believe in the Word, but they deny the power of. Think about it, if His power is set down, they couldn't deny it no more. Make sense? What are we going to do as the body of Christ to respond? And I love this because it goes on, it says, they were being overlooked. I don't believe in any three in no three realms, spirit, soul, or body. It should be overlooked. I think the wisdom and the mind of Christ gives us the ability to minister in all three realms. In other words, so for this secret debate, the disciples says in verse two. So the twelve summoned the congregation of the disciples. So in other words, remember the disciples are multiplying. 
But he calls everybody together and he says, you know what? I hear about the secret debate. I hear about it. You know how you get frustrated with somebody? My wife gave me this example earlier because I didn't understand exactly what that meant. When it ran she said, you know, when you get frustrated with me or if I get frustrated with you, I kind of say under my voice, but we know there's a problem, but it has been said out loud, but it ain't so like this. The, 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 the disciple says this. Look, the, the apostle says this. Look, all you disciples, let's get together. And that which is being murmured about, we're going to handle it. Make sense? See, when you walk as a son, when you truly walk in the kingdom, you know that you can speak with your brother because you got your eyes on Christ Jesus. And with that, no matter what's going on, you can address this thing. First, you got to acknowledge, hey, this is what's going on. Murmuring won't do nothing. Complaining won't do nothing. But when you go to, um, and you come together as one, it says he'll make his throne upon you. He'll make his throne. So what is he going to do? Let's go on and see. It says this. As he summoned the congregation of disciples said, It is not desirable for us to neglect the word of God in order to serve tables. This is what I want to bring revelation. I know this from taking building. Uh, God told me to build here in commerce. There's so much upon, and I'm not trying to say this because I'm a senior leader. There is so much upon a senior leader if we're not careful in becoming a disciple and learn to put our hands upon things and learn to minister in all three realms. See, we want to go straight from being saved, spiritual birth, to behind the pulpit. But we got to get back to a place. A son knows this, that he serves all the time. But the disciples said this, or the apostles said this, look. There's one thing that we've realized, and I think they got it from Jesus. They watched him for three and a half years. No matter how many times he went to the synagogue, no matter how many times he labored in the two or three o'clock in the middle of the night, healing the sick and casting out devils, you would always see him go into a wilderness, means a, 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 a solitude place to pray to the Father. See, we got the New Testament now. We got Acts of how the first church met. They didn't have Acts. They didn't even have the four Gospels. They walked in the four Gospels and was writing as they went forward. Does this make sense? See, we got to understand where they was at, and that helps us understand where we are at. And what it will do is it won't feel enslaved. Look, I can tell you when I when, look, when I first went into come to the church and I got saved, and I was truly saved, I was like, what can I do? And I commend some of you because that's like, what can I do? I can remember when Shane and Haley come. But what can I do? What, what, what can we do next? Dave, when we start talking about something, what can I do? You see what I'm saying? What can I do to take and follow the gospel? I don't care what it is. We got to be able to clean the toilets like we can take and speak on the microphone. Amen? We got to be able to get in the streets and help pull somebody out and say, you know what? I, I not focus on the liquor bottle in their hand, but I have the, uh, the word of knowledge or the word of prophecy to speak that they can walk out of that dry place, that broken place, to walk in the fullness of which God's called them to walk in. I hear you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Let's get back on stage. There's too much pressure on ones that's been processed and they're having to do too much. Number one, I think revelation is coming to some that will take and preach the word and say, look, the spirit of slumber is being broke off the household. What I mean is the body of Christ. Amen? Our Americanized has got to go. I'm going to preach it for what it is. We've got to quit being lazy and get to work. They, what do they know? That It says, um... Uh, therefore, brethren, select from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Spirit and of wisdom, whom we may put in charge of this task. He said they can't neglect the Word of God and they can't neglect prayer. They knew the importance of it. Number one, if you ain't in the Word of God, you might be praying something that's amiss. But when you're in the Word of God, you repeat the Word of God back to Him. And then He'll change it into your dialect. Um, and with the thou, or thee, you, same thing, right? Still means the same. You can understand the Word of God, and when you pray, you know you're not praying amiss. You know what? There's sometimes He gives me words of English I don't even know. I'm like, okay, i got to go look that up now, get in the canon. I'm talking about the Logos. We'll make sure I understand what I'm speaking. I heard you, God, and I released it, but I need to know what I'm saying. 
That makes sense. Y'all see me when it right in the middle of preaching. What does that mean? Why? I know what God's saying and I know His voice. But look, I, I got to know how to position my words. I got to understand my tongue is an arrow. Amen? Rokotanda. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So, who we may put, whom we may put in charge of this task. Let's talk about growth for a second. Just for a second. Or 30. Every individual has a vital role to the body. Does that make sense? What I love about Apostle Paul's life, he didn't walk with Jesus, but he encountered Jesus. He was an apostle that wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. He said, no man gave me the gospel, but I learned it straight from Jesus. Straight from the Father. Right? This is the word. But we watch his life. Now I think some people's construed it because they can read two or three chapters together or not put two or three things in context in other... Because um, uh, he was very transparent in the God... Uh, in, not the God, but in the letters he wrote through his missionary journeys that tied to the churches he planted. Make sense? So... What I love about Paul, I see him, he's about 19, 20 years old. He comes on the scene and, and, and he's very, he's, uh, has the, he has an approval addiction. He's just, uh, you know, he, he, he knows legal like authority in the natural that he's got to honor and respect. So he goes and gets letters. He just ain't running around killing people. He has letters to lock them up. We see death or murder, all this stuff, right? But we see as God encounters him in Acts 9, we see even his submission to Ananias when he lays hands on him and he gets filled with the Holy Ghost. We see he goes on and it says he immediately preached or immediately, which he immediately proclaimed and started teaching a little bit about what, he had, what happened. But then he faces something that God had already said. He told Ananias even. He said he will suffer much for the gospel. See, I believe he was very zealous. And the word goes on to say that he went for three years without touching flesh and blood. In other words, I don't believe he was in a dark hole. I don't believe he was stuck somewhere. I believe he was in a family business. I believe he was still tent making. I believe he was still living life to a certain degree. But I believe he was encountering God and unlearning everything that he had learned through his culture. And God was bringing revelation and rewiring his mind. That's the reason he can write and effectively and penetrate our life today. Because the word is spirit. It's Romans 12 and 2. Don't be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. Why? By the renewing of your mind. That you can prove what is good, acceptable, and the will of God. Amen? Then all of a sudden we see this. He goes up and he gets the right hand of fellowship after he's, um, he hangs out with an old apostle Peter for 15 days, the word says. Then it gets a little crazy in Jerusalem. And that, what do they do? They say, hey, take him over yonder, get him out of here. And he goes back to Arabia. See, he submitted to one of the apostles that had already been building and done. You see the submission in his life, even to the legal, to the ones of the natural of the spirit realm. Then it says Barnabas goes and finds him. Then it says he spends a year at Antioch. Then it says he sent with Barnabas to take money back to Jerusalem. Then it says he comes back and he's seeking and praying and fasting, which is something we used in context a few weeks ago. What, not what, what, how to build my ministry, but Lord, what's next? I just want to pray. What do you, what can I, what, what, what how can I posture my heart in a stronger degree to you? And then he's set apart. And so we see him on these missionary journeys. Look, there's no microwave reconciliation. Everything is truly a process. It took everything Jesus had. His life, right? To restore all of us. I'm not trying to say that you've got to spend 50 years before you can go into ministry. I believe truly this. When it comes to surrender and it comes to true um, repentance. In a, in a, you know it talks about a light and how fast light is. Like lightning or light. How fast it travels. I believe truly when your heart posture is um, surrender and you are truly in repentance, as fast as light. It talks about the word being the light. As fast as light, it'll cut something and restore something. 
But that all comes to us learning how to live now out of his world. Because now we rebirth back there once where we once was. And he's untwining in our soul everything we had learned up to that point where we got rebirthed. Amen? So this is my point with this. Every individual has a vital role to the body. He didn't come on the scene just being. He didn't even leave the first missionary journey. We see Barnabas. We see his name first, right? But we see the shift. We see the serving. We see everything. He preached it immediately. But I'm here to tell you, I get, there's a lot of serving he done that, that ain't rolled in the camp. Makes sense? Thank you, Lord Jesus. In the church at Antioch for a year, it says. He learned to steward a movement before God used him in the movement. Does that make sense? Thank you, Jesus. So, growth. If we look at 1 Corinthians 12 and 8 and 10, we know these are the nine gifts of the Spirit. But I love this. If you look at the beginning, it talks about Holy Spirit. He reminds them, the Corinthian church, hey, don't, don't forget when you took and lived and you was uh, swayed by the, uh, you was a pagan virtually, and you was swayed by all this mess yourself. Right? And he says, God, nobody can accurse Jesus. I think it's the word it uses. Nobody can accurse Jesus. The only way they say is Lord by Holy Spirit. And then it goes in and it says, Holy Spirit is the one that, that causes all this to take place. And then we go into the gifts and it says, we got the word of wisdom. The word of wisdom, look, it's the mind of Christ. It's the how-to in that direct moment. We'll get the gift of healing in a minute, but if the Lord shows me, there's been times like I felt something in my body that wasn't there, right? And I was like, okay, um, I feel uh, this is, the Lord is showing me that somebody's knees hurt, blah, blah, blah. And somebody walks forth through their knee. Well, I don't stop there. I tap into when the Holy Spirit showed me their knees um, to be healed. I can't heal them. Okay, there's a gift of healing. That you want to take first. I need to know a word of wisdom. I need to know how you want to heal me. Make sense? Word of wisdom. It ain't just for that. You could be setting in kingdom business. I'll tell you this much right here. It was one time I was sitting in a corporate meeting and I said, this right here is what's going to take place. This number. Lawyer didn't believe in God. Didn't know. I mean, he, he listened to me the whole time I was there. I, I mean, I just talk about Jesus. All I know to talk about, right? He'd been redeemed. He jerked me from where he jerked me. I'm just talking about it. Just speaking about what the Holy Spirit. I get this number, Dave, and I'm telling you, that's what coming. It was the finalized thing. I got it to this day on paper. That was the number. Been times I've had to bid on something when it comes to business. I know the field. I've been doing it since I was seven. I've been dragging pallets since I was seven years old in my grandpa's backyard. But see, when you have God, the one that changes the hearts of kings, this is what will take place. He'll give you exactly what you need for that moment. He'll give you exactly the way that heaven wants to move for that moment. He just needs you to step in faith. I'm in a pallet business, right? And it's cutthroat. I'm talking about cutthroat. I'm just being transparent with these things because we minimized it to an altar in a building. And we're not being the kingdom and the ecclesia that goes forward. Amen? So with this, I'm, I, I, got, I got a few pallet companies around me we're just, we're allies. Right? I don't mess with any. If I hear they see anything like that, or somebody calls me, they're, oh, hey, they just call me. I know you got them. I just, I just honor them that way, right? So, all of a sudden, I, I go over to pray for uh, uh, the one of the owners of a pallet company, and, um, and and discussing some business at the same time. I'm leaving, right? And I hear the Lord say, "Call them back and tell them." Um, and I didn't know this. I didn't. I, I had no clue of this. I said, but the Lord virtually shared. So I called him. And I said, the Lord shared with me. There's two customers that y'all need to go up fifty cents on, um, and uh, it go up on them fifty cents, and the Lord's gonna honor it. You're losing money. 
They called me back a week later and they said they accepted it. But they didn't just go up 50 cents. They said, hey, we'll go up to, the, I think it was like 65 cents. It was 15 cents more. And when you're dealing with hundreds of thousands of pallets, that adds up 15 cents. A penny adds up. My point being with this, it's not that I'm super spiritual. I could have been more about the business that I do and, and tried to build my own kingdom. But no, God was moving in the midst of somebody else's business to prosper them. And I was the gateway to facilitate through a word of wisdom. It took a word of knowledge and a word of wisdom there. Okay? So a word of wisdom is how to. It's that simple. Word of knowledge is anything of the past up to the present. It's the truth, the facts of what's happened. It's reason so much because I know what God's called me to and it's, it's soul issues and soul brokenness and people's souls and trauma and all this stuff uh, uh, of what, what's happened in life. Life showed up, right? When we went from victim to victimizer. And the Lord gives me all these years of like when people was traumatized or when they become the victimizer. Stuff like that. And God's wanting to deliver them from the lies of hell and the guilt and the shame that they walk in that they come in agreement with. And that, look, I'm telling you, I've seen where demonic forces have infiltrated people at a young age and it brought their deliverance. I spoke to Jezebel. I spoke to witchcraft. I spoke to all these different demonic forces and they wouldn't budge. But the moment I found their gateway, their legal access at that age. Ha, the Lord give me the wisdom now and the knowledge for His power to infiltrate. See, God, when you pray, it ain't a miss. It's directional and it is strategic. See, we we turn if we're not careful. And this is something I want to equip you. I don't care how many's here. I don't care how many's listening. If I can get one to hear me, if we quit prostituting the word of God in the gifts out, truly we can see revival. Then it comes more that we have compassion for that one to walk in kingdom business. Truly for that one to walk out of trauma. Truly for that one to be delivered from that. That's what the gifts of the Spirit is for, to bring freedom. Amen? Amen? The gift of faith. It's just different than faith. It's like a supernatural faith that comes on. And I know this has hit me at times. There's been times, even the pallet business, when I come back into it, and, and my papa was fixing to sell everything. And I was in the midst of drug court day. And the Lord told me, said, Luke, just go over and talk to him. I said, I've let him down so many times, Lord. I said, I've missed it so many times. I've about broke everything so many times. He said, just go and speak. And he said, say this. Not Dustin trying to build up a, 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 a and, and try to bring this witchcraft and, and convince them. He said, just go say this, son. And everybody, after I have this conversation, I start moving more into it. Uh, everybody, don't do this. It's the hardest business now. It's so cutthroat. It's so this and it's so that. See, God can take a son of God or a child of God and raise them up into a son. It don't matter what field he's birthed you in. It don't matter what part of this world that he's put your hands to in the natural. He can take you and not just multiply and bring forth production of things, but he can bring you into a point that you see souls healed, souls delivered. He can bring it where truly pallet companies or pallet, uh, uh, or say, we'll say it's something else. We'll say candle factory. It don't matter what it is. Social, new social media plan. What it, uh, it don't matter what it is. He'll bring it where peace can come in where everybody else in the world said there's no way. You know why they said it? Because they never tasted a peace. They never had peace walk in a jail cell with them. I ain't even talking about a natural one now. I'm talking about the whole body you walking in. When peace enter in, then our peace is available everywhere you go. We just have to learn to be peacemakers because blessed are they. Amen. Amen? Amen? Has it all been perfect, all been easy? No, but it's all been worth it. Gift of faith. Supernatural faith. You just have to have, I mean, it's just like faith means abiding, right? Faith, faith is having, faith says I can have it now. So when you have faith and you learn you this thing is built, your faith is built. But when the gift of faith comes upon, faith shift. I mean it moves, it just happens. Amen? Amen. Gift of healing. 
or it's his gift of healings. So think about this. It might be the fact of we see a six-month process, but they was calling death or saying he was always going to live with this. We, we see it might be, it, it could be a process of 18 months, or it could be in just a couple of days. So some was healed immediately, and some were healed as they went. The gift of healings. So I'm not, I don't discount doctors. Number one, I say go to the doctor. I used to be against doctors. I ain't not against doctor doctors like people, but like going to the doctor. Okay? Most of that was pride because I thought I was just I was okay and I was gonna, you know, all that good stuff. But I believe number one, because God has given them words that was just a word, and now it's formulated machines and different processes that we can identify things. That we couldn't even identify that kind of sickness back years ago. Even 10 years ago. There's new things that come forth every day. Do I believe in medication? No. I think there's certain medications that are help. But anything that don't have an end date, I don't, I don't believe in it. I, it's just not me. It's okay if you, don't, if you disagree, it's okay. But you want to take these kids that's ADHD, they say? The devil is a lot of them kids are gifted. People need to learn how to raise up and deal with kids into the fullness of what they're called to be. I'm not saying they might not have a mental capacity. I'm not saying they might not have a problem. What I'm saying is this, is if you truly go to the Father in heaven, it says in Psalms 103 and 3 that he, the Word come to heal every disease. You diagnose it, okay. I'm going to undiagnose it by the Word of God. I'm not going to say it's an instant thing. I'm going to say this, that I'm going to take and stand on the Word until I see it, take its course, and it be healed. Make sense? Because we look at healing just as in a natural thing, bones and just cancer and arthritis and stuff like that. But let's talk about the trauma. Let's talk about the soul. Let's talk about the brokenness. You know, you can't get off drugs. They put you on another drug called methadone. And now they're saying that there's people that come off that that die if they come off of it. The world only can take and help you um, function through the pain of your soul. Function through the pain. I'm not saying... Kingdom doctors and kingdom psychiatrists and kingdom counselors. That's not what I'm saying. And I'm not a doctor. I know the doctor. I remember how, he, how I used and wanted to not feel. I told my wife last night. I said I, I ran all my life from trying to feel. And now God has delivered me to the point of teaching me how to help sponge other peoples and transform where they can learn to feel, where they can have emotion, where they can function as a real human being. Affection is real. Men and women should have affection to truly walk out the heartbeat of the Father. But we can't walk around drunk with all this medication all the time that there's not an end date to be set free. Otherwise, we're walking out of a work of the flesh, which is farm, uh, which is sorcery or witchcraft, which is pharmacia, which is what? There's many of people, the Lord showed me this, and I didn't understand it then. It was about 2015 to, to 2016. I, I was watching uh, pastors and stuff, and they would go into a different realm. But they weren't going through Christ Jesus, but they were preaching Christ Jesus. They were taking medication, they get in the spirit room, and they had accurate words of knowledge. But when they prophesied, nothing would happen. Why? Because they went illegally. They went through the gate, which is Christ Jesus. They went over the thing. They love, I ain't saying they don't love Jesus. They be confused. They're ignorant. I'm here today to show the ignorance that some of the body of Christ is working and walking in because uh, we fabricated things and not walking in the authenticity of personal relationship with Him. If you got a situation, you got a problem. I'm not your answer. I contain the answer. All I can do is facilitate it. But you have to pick. Or look, it goes as far as I can speak it, as far as I can show you an example. In other words, Paul said, I don't want to just take and preach a thing and be disqualified. I want to be able to take and preach the gospel and show it in my example. It's one thing to have knowledge. But look, it wouldn't penetrate. When it's true prophecy, when it's truly the word of God, it will do this. It penetrates and it will break you in momentum in the spirit. 
You might have been stagnant and locked down with depression or fear or shame or guilt. But the moment somebody can get a word of knowledge or a, a word of wisdom, and with that, they prophesy in your life. I don't think I'm too prophecy yet. Uh, and prophesy in your life. It brings a progression in the spirit. And everything that held on to you has to release itself because it's the word of God. I was on gift of healing one. Yeah. Working the miracles. And we talk about healings. I believe working the miracles can take place in the natural too. All of a sudden, we see somebody. Look, I see it would have been called healing, but I seen that thing as a miracle. I seen a bone pop back in place one time on the street corner. But let's go to miracles like your axe head fell off your axe. You was doing everything you know to do. It's going to hit home for some of you tonight. Uh, uh, your axe had fell off your axe and it went into the river. Here comes your faith, the supernatural faith that'll come on your life. He says, throw that branch over there and, it, and it'll float back to the top. That's what happened in the Old Testament. I'm talking about gifts. Of, I'm talking about workings of miracles that way. Working of miracles. I'm working with what the Father's saying. I'm working with what He's saying step by step. And a miracle take place. See, we've come so. We're supposed to persevere and endure. And we, we're so fickle in the body of Christ that it don't come out in two minutes out of the microwave. We say, you know what? Let's go to the house. Sometimes we just got to let our praises keep going until it breaks the atmosphere. We've looked at it as a four walls thing, but it's a regional thing. And we continue to praise and we continue to speak and we continue to prophesy. So I used to get nervous when it get real, real quiet. But now I thank God when it gets quiet because that means His voice can come prevalent, prevalent to the multiple in the room uh, that we can hear our soul can get hushed enough that we truly hear in the spirit realm and we'll be courageous and boldness enough or whatever to walk in what the Lord's saying. Working of miracles. I'm talking about metal. That the bot, that I'm, I'm, uh, what about a leg growing out? Somebody grow your leg out right now. Anybody got any short legs in here from the other one? Oh, we're going to speak to that in a little bit. So that'd be a word of knowledge, right? We'll test that out in a moment. He'll come demonstrate back up His Word every time that I've ever heard a word from God. Not just read something or had some knowledge about something. Every time He's ever spoken, He's, he's demonstrated that thing. That's the God I serve. Y'all see the word of I had no clue. It's a spiritual daughter. I had no clue. Said that. Amen? Yeah. You better believe he's fixing to do it. Amen. Yeah. I hear you, Holy Spirit. He says, preach this and we're going to do this. Gift of prophecy. We don't spoke about it. It's virtually um, it's speaking into the future. But you've got to understand prophecy is conditional. Makes sense. I, I hit a lot on prophecy a while ago when he married. So, um, but you got to understand this. Um, a lot of times people confuse wisdom and they confuse knowledge and prophecy and to get together. But let's say they're the same part of the same vehicle, but they're all different. Prophecy speaks into the future and identifies something that God is going to demonstrate. There, He's already predestined. It's already wrote. Looks into your future. Speaks it. Reads your mail. But it's conditional. Why I say it's conditional? Because you've got to step with the Holy Spirit through that. Remember, I can only release that and that's something up ahead. And you don't position yourself, it could delay it. That's what I'm getting at. You could miss it. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Discerning the spirits. I can discern. If Jody's got a bad spirit, it helps me see his motives and his intentions. It helps me see when somebody walks in and they say, I got a word of God. If they are sent by the enemy or if they sent by God. 
It helps me see, because this is what something you'll learn even in a corporate setting. There will be people that enemy sins, and they will be standing right here to distract a move of God right beside them. So you've got to have a discerning of spirits to be able to see that. It's a supernatural ability of the eyes of God to expo- light will expose darkness. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. It'll help you when that test comes along on the job site when you should get that, uh, that, that promotion. But all of a sudden somebody was put up ahead of you and, and the deceitfulness. There's one thing about it. The Word of God says anything that's quickly gained will be quickly lost if it's of deceit. Right? I know that's my words. It's not exactly this. out of Proverbs. It's there. Go look it up. Google it. <laughs> and then go study it and make sure. Okay? Don't just take Dustin's word. It's a resource. It's okay. Google's not bad. You just don't trust in Google. You trust in the living God. Google will get you to somewhere it might take you hours to find. You can do it in seconds. That's my point. But you can see what's going on and you can see there's been many times I get frustrated think, my goodness, what in the world just happened in business? And if I would stop and get out my emotion, I've learned this by the, the Spirit of the living God and by the ones God has sent in my life to entrust uh, uh, the trajectory of what God has predestined for me to be effective in the kingdom. People might be saved, but I don't want to live in the fullness of what God's told me to live in in this time passing through earth. And with that, uh, I, I, like, I, it was even Monday, I believe, I see all this stuff happen, and all I, all I can do is hear all these spirits say, son, I got this. Shane, you know what he told me a few minutes later? He said, I'm protecting you. Discerning the spirit. See, when I heard his voice, I didn't look at the situation. I looked and I remembered that it's not against flesh and blood, but it's against what? Powers and demonic forces, right? So I ain't put my eyes on the demonic. I'm saying this, you know what? I won't come down there. I ain't going to get distracted here. You have things, Holy Spirit, you want to do today, and I had an agenda this morning. I'm going to walk in your agenda, check off as much as I had to do, and I'm going to go to bed tonight. Because if I do it my way, I'm going to sleep a wink. I'll be trying to fix something that's already finished. See, we've, we, we've closed these gifts in too much to inside the walls, and they're really meant for out there. Kingdom business, government, whatever you're in, whatever you're infiltrating, any of those seven systems of the world that you're called to, look, those gifts, you can have all nine of these. I ain't even got to all of them yet. Holy Spirit. I've already been preaching a little while. We're going to get there, though. I ain't got another hour and a half of there. Kids ain't got school more, do they? All right. Diverse kinds of tongues. This is talking about you go into a tongues and you're speaking in another language. So in other words, if all of us were in, speak our native language is English and say um, that uh, Abigail come in and she was Russian and she always spoke in Russian. All of a sudden I'm speaking in English to y'all and I'm speaking uh, in, in, in uh, 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 Russian to her. Everybody's understanding the word of God. Make sense? And then the gift of interpretation. That's interpreting, like that's when somebody speaks it in a tongues and interprets what they say. Just to let you know and to help you, Paul also states in the living word that made it to the canon, the one that speaks in tongues is better if that person even interprets. But if not, there will be another interpreter in the room. Make sense? But this wasn't just meant for here. We've Americanized it before walls, y'all. Make sense? I believe in coming together. I believe in it. I've seen some of you even break free of the real life you had going on from the day when I walked in and seen you here. But we're to mature and learn how to break through and learn how to go as one, weep together, rejoice together that there's no breaches and the only time that we separate for that soul to be added in between us. Make sense? And it's never really a separation. It's just a placement was already meant to be there. Make sense? 
Thank you, Holy Spirit. So, we go on through this, and we're looking at this, so this gives us a different perspective. Why is Paul writing this to them? Because they were very gifted in Corinth. The church is very gifted and very knowledgeable right now. But we're not very loving. Love says, I'll meet you right where you're at, and love won't leave you where you're at. See, I was broken, and I was an addict that was traumatized. Nobody could see the trauma. They could only see the addict. But Jesus seen the trauma, and he said, I'm going to infiltrate that boy's life. I'm going to show him how powerful when I say it's finished, it's finished. Amen. Make sense? Same thing with you. Same thing with the people you're going to go and you're going to take and prophesy and move to or move by the door and facilitate the Word of God. Move in the gifts of the Spirit. But he goes on and he, he compares us to a body through this and it's showing that every person has its part. Ephesians says we supply, I think it is, uh, one another. And so as you go down and we all see that we have, we have a position as a bond servant, we have a function, a purpose as we're called back into this earth. We go down and we see responsibilities of the church. 1 Corinthians 12 and 27 says this, we're going to responsibility. Now you are Christ's body and individual members of it. Paul is revealing that sonship is the highest place in the kingdom. Not because you're an apostle. Not because you're a pastor. Not for any of your title. Make sense? What are, we, what are we dealing with over there in uh, Acts 6? We're dealing with administration of food. In that moment and in the movement of God, can, are we more concerned what we look like? I'm here to tell you God's raising up a new generation next door because an older generation would not step up. But for God's glory, He's going to show what He'll do no matter if the person's willing or not. Make sense? Our part to see the fatherness of the God uh, uh, of the kingdom, the fatherness of the gospel preached, souls truly not just uh, 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 I want to be saved and go back into the world, but truly encounters with God and they come into the fold and they learn not to get in here and be stagnant, but to be raised up and sent. Make sense? What I'm getting at is every individual mem mem uh, member has to realize this before you will ever walk in a, uh, the fullness of what He's called you to in this earth realm. That sonship is the highest place in the kingdom. You'll never walk in authority if you don't walk as a son. You might walk in some other authority and be deceived. Look at that. I seen it raining earlier. I ain't looked at I mean I looked at the weather where we camping, but I didn't look at it here. Thank you, Holy. I literally seen water dropping in here earlier. It was raining in heaven though before it started raining here. Does that make sense? I just thank God for his he's just so faithful. So say that. Sonship is the highest place in the kingdom. Sonship is the highest place in the kingdom. All right, so let's talk about our responsibility. For, for, for children of God, think about this. When, when we was little, we didn't walk in responsibility so much, right? But as we begin to mature, we learn to be responsible. So, like, think about this. When we was about to get that car when we was 16, we looked at that as like, woo, right? We didn't look at it as responsibility. How am I going to get gas? How am I going to take and pay the insurance? If I wreck it, how, the insurance may go up. You know, we're running 120 down the road. I mean, I've been there. I'm just trying to bring a perspective tonight. That's how we get in the body of Christ sometimes. We get all zealous like uh, maybe, maybe Saul was from what we understood in the Bible. And, and we're going to go do this. And we think everybody's our assignment. And the first time somebody rejects what we're saying, uh, we shut down and never preach the gospel again. First time we have a dream and we have it interpreted. And it's, it's accurate. They reject that. Okay, I'm not going to take it. I've been there. 
But the Word of God says this. Release peace and if it returns to you, go shake all the dust and keep going because somebody will receive that peace. That's the difference in being a child of God and being a son of God. A child says, you know what? Ah, yeah, I'm going to quit. I'll just sit over here. I'm going to ride my ticket on to heaven. A son says, ah, oh, okay, you don't want it. Uh, oh, uh, 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 what's his name down the road? I, I see it. Holy Spirit, I mean, what do you want to do today? I, I'm so hungry for your presence. I ain't want to just take it go make a show. But there's somebody broken out there today. There's somebody huh, that needs to step into the kingdom business they're called to today. There's somebody that's feeling like quitting. Huh? Can you put me in the trajectory of where they're at? that I can take and tap in to what's already inside of me to establish hope in them. One word from God facilitated you can change somebody's life. One word. I didn't say 30 paragraphs or 17 hours in prayer. One word. And that goes in private prayer. I've said one and two sentence prayers before and seen more power in it than 17 hours of prayer. I've never prayed 17 hours straight, so. But I have five or six. Give or take, I don't know. I ain't going to lie to you. I just talk to God all the time. Somebody said one time, this religion is something they was taught. They said all these people walk around. Just pray. I just don't, I don't agree with that. Now I'm talking about a Pentecostal fire-breathing church. Don't believe you can just go around praying in tongues. And then they said this right afterwards. This is religion. This is soul. This is man-made stuff. Said God ain't always speaking. I said the devil is a liar. He hit me in my gut. I said, what in the world? God, I've been listening to you since this morning. <laughs> and you don't talk all the time. This is what he said to me. I was young. I was young. In the, I just had a guy. I would look, I, I still have my diaper changed in the gospel, okay? I was zealous, but I still have my diaper changed. You know, I want to put them in a headlock and, and push this revelation into what I want. So they're thinking, my goodness, how long have you been doing this? That's what I'm thinking. I'm internalizing this, right? Not only had he been speaking all day, he didn't quit, but it then. And the cool thing is, thank God I didn't shut his voice down. He said, don't punish him for the revelation that he ain't attained yet. And don't take it, um, what else did he tell me? He said, don't punish him for the revelation that he ain't attained yet. And I don't humiliate anybody. I, uh, I, I'll allow them to humiliate themselves. I didn't understand that at first. But after walking with the Lord and understanding there's things that I still had been revealed. There's things that I preached when I first started preaching. I wouldn't preach now. Does that make sense? Am I saying what he said? It's okay to know. You got to know your son. You got to be a mature enough when you got to pray something through. You got to be mature enough when you don't say a word and your example says it all. Make sense? That's why we got so many gang wars going on in the body of Christ. Because people speaking when they, oh, oh I got this real I'm going to stand on it. Look, you stand on your relationship with Jesus Christ and listen to what he said. When you stand and listen to what he said, he is perfect example. There's times to rebuke. There's times of correction. But are they your son? It's been many a times. Spiritual sons and daughters and brothers and sisters come to me and they want to fix it. I'm like, look, I've already been down that road. You don't want to go unless God tells you to go. They ain't your, that's the enemy trying to get you distracted. You need to tap back into the gift of discernment or discerning of spirits. Discernment's different. That's knowing how to walk with the Holy Spirit. Discernment. All right. Let's get back on this. To get our responsibility. Responsibility. Once you know the highest place, then you can you can accept your responsibility. You don't care if you're called to be an apostle. You know what an apostle is? It's responsibility. You know what a prophet is? It's responsibility. You know what pastoral is? It's responsibility. And the fact that I don't care what it is, God, if, it, if it's helps, it's responsibility. If it's administration, it's a responsibility. 
Whatever it is God's called you. You know what? Most of the time there's people that come to me and they'll say this. They'll say, I just don't even feel qualified. And I said, the, the posture of your heart and your honesty shows me you're qualified. Now let's walk here. I had, I had, um, I had a spiritual, uh, a spiritual, um, uh, uh, somebody God's entrusted to me, um, just speaking, speaking to me, being transparent, um, with some dreams at one point. And, and they was like, Lord, if I let something back in, I said, now look, that's wisdom. I can get a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom for you. And after I leave, I will use that thing as an example to take inventory on Dustin. Does that make sense? I'm never overqualified. Just because I facilitate it, it may hit you in me. Makes sense for God to reveal because what happened with the Corinthian church? They had got prideful saying this gift's higher than this gift. No, it's more responsibility. But I'm here to tell you, we can have as many doors as you want, but without hinges, those doors are ineffective. It's the same thing with the body of Christ. We got a bunch of doors sitting around with no hinges. Amen? So, the responsibility of a son or of sons is to submit and do what the father does. That's John 5 and 19. Sons are having, uh, uh, he said, remember in the scripture when we, um, uh, when we come out of the thing, the um, sons have um, a good reputation. In other words, when you break down good reputation to be a witness, to bear witness, to affirm that one has seen or heard or experienced something or that he knows it because taught by divine re revelation and inspiration. Okay, what am I saying? Look, if the world, and look, most of the world, most 90% or maybe 99% of my family, and this may be for you, and I hope this helps you, identifies you of your past. Because they're still traumatized by what happened. They may not have been set free from what maybe as you was maybe a victim and traumatized they become a victimizer. They still see you through their trauma, through their brokenness, or through the cycles you went through for years. Right? I'm just using my testimony, right? I have to see beyond that. Okay? And I, what it is, is now, after seven years on October the 7th of 2020, I have been delivered from opiates, and God has been working on us. I truly got set free of uh, my Christ Jesus. Make sense? Now, there's bare witness in the spirit, not just in the natural. It don't matter what the sheriff says. It don't matter what the judge says. It don't matter what my natural thumbprint says. I'm talking about people that truly are seated in Christ Jesus that now can identify. Look, he's not perfect. She's not perfect. But they are continually submitting and owning what they miss and giving all glory to the King of Kings when he sets them free. Amen. Make sense? It can be affirmed. In other words, there's a testimony. Let me tell you how you set free when you speak about that thing of the past and it no longer has guilt, shame, or fear upon you. That's when I know you've been set free from that. When you can speak that, then you're going to be in full effect to facilitate that to the next one that's traumatized by the same thing. Or dealing with something similar. <laughs> full of the Spirit. Now this is Holy Spirit. That's a capital S. Amen? Amen. So most of the times, and I'd say in context with the Corinthian church and a lot of the charismatic and, um, you know, your Pentecostal, all the, that believes in the fullness of the power, a lot of times you see the gifts. But you've got to find holy first. You've got to understand the character of God. Holy Spirit is no different than the Father. See, this is one thing that I've been really studying. When we view Jesus, we see Him as gracious and merciful and all this stuff. But y'all, and we see the Father as this hard and just uh, this, this very mean. And, uh, uh, no, we got to identify. They're the same. He's just as gracious and merciful. we got to understand that Jesus had the same kind of authority and the same kind of... He come to set people free, but He called the religious people out. 
He had fire in his eyes when he walked up on them. When you know a son or daughter truly walking in the gospel, when you look in their eyes, you'll see holiness in their eyes. Not that they're any better, but you'll see God's true holiness that's coming through them a light that will start to shine. And the thing is, when that holiness comes through, don't run, don't take and shy away and feel guilty or fear. Run to God. Don't run to that man. Just take and say, hey, whatever it is, I need to get free. I need set free. I don't care what it is. I just want what you have. Full of the Spirit. So character and gifts. Do you know we just look a lot of times at the gifts with power? But y'all understand it was the power that raised Jesus from the dead? In other words, why did he die? Because he took on every bit of our sin. Right? But he was raised so it takes power. Amen? That's what grace is and empowerment. For whatever you try to quit, just begin something new and empowerment. The grace of Jesus Christ. When it says grace upon grace, whatever you're facing, there is the sufficient work of Jesus Christ, the finished work, that when you take and come into agreement and he reveals that to you, when you begin to speak that louder than the thoughts the enemy's speaking, or when the enemy ain't even really there and you rebuking the enemy, and it's really your own thoughts. That's why we got to get in our word and we got to pray our word out loud. See, too many times you sit there and you look at the word and you're just, yeah, I'm not saying there's not times of quiet times. It's not what I'm saying. But look, there should be more times you're speaking that out loud. People tell me a lot of times, well, I just feel like I'm going to fall asleep and I, I feel like and when I go to read my word, I just, I feel like this and I'm going to get up, walk around the room and start speaking it as loud as when you was walking with the devil, you were singing that song you loved. He who which began a good work will continue to the day of Jesus. Look, there ain't no way I can sleep in that. The cool thing is, whoever's in the next room will get a little bit too. Amen. Amen. It ain't the volume of your voice. It's the posture of your heart. The Lord spoke to me. I said, Lord, how do I do this? He said, you know, I used to go after everything in the world wide open. He said, come after me like that. And when I positioned that kind of zeal to it, it turned into passion because they saw that it filled me. It's called the Holy Ghost, the pureness. See, when the Holy Ghost fills you, He'll bring intimacy. He'll bring the fullness of the Word. You won't just know a thing. You'll experience that thing. And it becomes a part of who you are. Amen. And you begin seeing yourself as a part of Him. Amen. See, we're trying to lead people to Jesus in a lower level. We need to rise up and say he's redeemed me to him. Let me show you to the one that's redeemed me. Come on up here. I'm no better. I just sat here to tell you. Come on up. Come on up. Out of your emotion. Out of your mindset. Out of your trauma. Out of your brokenness. Out of your depression. Amen? Amen. Amen. So both of these are power and of wisdom. This is talking about character and gifts. And I love this because, you know, we know we got the spirit of wisdom, right? That's what the word calls it. But the word says, full of the spirit and of wisdom. Make sense? I used to ask the Lord, why do you separate that? And you are the spirit of wisdom. You know, you can reject. You can reject what God's trying to give you. I think it's one thing with the body of Christ a lot of times because we don't know how to turn loose of what we've always lived in and how much knowledge we have and our intellectual. I'm not against being intellectual, but everything we taught and we studied and God hasn't truly been present, how we've learned life and stuff like this. I think because we grip that stuff so much, our hands are so full with that that we can't receive the fullness of what He's trying to give over to us. So I want to break down wisdom. And my spiritual father kind of guided me in this. We have wisdom through experience. I used to go every time before I, I, I get, I, I truly, I believe God would encounter me in times of jail and like set me free um, to uh, a certain degree. But then I would walk away from the wisdom of God. Wisdom is how to, remember? So um, 
I had experiences and I would go back to hanging out at a bonfire. Not drinking, not using, not, not fornicating, not doing all these things. So I have learned experience of wisdom of, look, you can't put yourself in certain positions because every time, whether it was a month, three or six, even I think I went seven months one time without relapse. I don't know if it was that long or not. Maybe seven weeks. That sounds a little better. Uh, it sounds more right. Even if I made it that long, I still relapsed. Really what was taking place is this. See, Jesus redeems us when we go back to a place in God. But we may be still operating out of a, a broken area. And if that broken area in our soul ain't dealt with and we're experiencing time with God, what will take place is we'll begin to condemn ourselves. We'll continue to walk in shame. We'll continue to walk in guilt and fear. And we don't know how to break free. We don't understand the power that's filled us will give us the ability to deal with broken and trauma and emotion and put the flesh in subjection. The power, remember, the power that's inside of you that you tap into as a son to say, you know what, I'm not going there anymore. I'm not doing that no more. I told, I told somebody, I was like, I would do it. Uh, I, would, I, I never had like, like, I couldn't hide alcohol. So the reason I drank alcohol it's because I couldn't get nothing else. That's what was available. But still, even though that wasn't the trigger and the doorway of what I wanted, and or like what took me to not feel, like I was like, you know what? I'm not going down that aisle that has liquor on it. I'm not going into this area with that. If I needed something over there, look, can you get this? I told y'all before. Um, uh, uh, then then we know, we'll go to the next wisdom. It's passed down wisdom. So through drug court, they put all these healthy boundaries in place. Like you had to do it, or like I had no desire to do a lot of this stuff, but it put such things in place and I did it for long enough or whatever, it shifted my thinking. I had the Word of God which is alive and acting and I had something around me hold me accountable. Make sense? And with that, what took place is it was a passed down wisdom. That's the reason we have spiritual fathers and mothers. That's the reason uh, uh, we have pastors. That's the reason we have people in our lives. We have professional counselors. I didn't. I earlier was talking about uh, uh, things. I didn't. What against kingdom counselors? I ain't even against certain secular ones. If God is working through you, because He'll teach you how to walk in the Spirit. What I'm saying is this. They passed down certain accountability that gave me wisdom now to even impart to you. And it wasn't, it was, you know, the Spirit was using them to teach me, but it was passed down to me. There's things that my spiritual father has walked through in ministry that he passes down to me that I don't have to have learned experience. Make sense? And then we have wisdom straight from God. It means I didn't have to mess it up 99 times. And get it right on the hundredth time, I skipped straight to the hundredth time and got it right. Not because I'm so good, I just had access. I got access and I can approach it boldly. So saying this, full of the Spirit and having enough maturity to walk in wisdom. In other words, that they ain't got to take a key bust in their head every time to learn something. Some of you, and this is in the room and I believe online, some of you have got words from God and you're rejecting the word of God because you're living in what you grew up for so long and what you know. And God, I hear it specifically in kingdom business and even in some levels of trauma. God is wanting to expand you and take you into places and I trust you with certain things, but you've got to turn loose what's in your hands to grip what he's trying to do in your life. I just heard the Lord say, go ahead and figure out how to hire people. Hire people. And I know that. I remember when I was on that forklift, I was sorting pallets, I was building pallets, I was on the saw. I was doing, I, I, if it needed to be delivered, I'd deliver it. How can you have a business or a, go into a company? A company means you ain't got to be present. You're in communication. Because you got people you're delegating things in. Make sense? So with that, how can I take in, how can I have a second location of business right now and 
um, and still take him driving the forklift every day, 10, 12 hours a day. Because I didn't work like eight hours. I worked until it all got done and I was satisfied. And it takes a lot to satisfy me when I'm doing it and got my hands on it. I mean, it's just it's how I feel. I want to get it all done. And I had to grip my pride and how I learned to do things and learn to trust people. So who that's for? I know who it's for in the room. And it's in the ministry. And it's in the work side. Delegate that by the wisdom of God and step into the new and the fullness that God's going to pour on your life. It's tough. It cuts, but it will take its shift. Everything. How do I know that? Because I've been there. Amen? And of wisdom. How to's. Experience passed down mind of Christ. They don't just live in the Spirit, but they walk in the Spirit. What's going on? When we look back at Scripture in context of, of Acts chapter 6, they're coming to a point where the kingdom is, is multiplying and they got to feed some people. And it says we got to have seven we can put in charge. That doesn't mean that they take and come down and, 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 and do it all the hands on every day. What they got to do is say they're in charge. I trust you and I'll leave you with this. Uh, walk in the Spirit, son. Right? Siri's trying to jump in. I had to cut her off on my watch there. Um, it says, verse 4, But we devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the Word. Devote ourselves. Uh, continue with focus is other trend. I mean, uh, 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 devote ourselves means continually focused. I know they got to position their self. They were saying, look, y'all feeding the natural, but we got to continue to see the kingdom multiply. Look, we can get a lot of people filled with natural food and not eating um, spiritual food. And all they'll do is get fat and sassy. And this is a word to any pastor. And it ain't just because uh, I've lost some weight, okay? I gained a little bit of weight. Uh, uh, but it ain't just because I, you look at my figure or, uh, right now. Uh, uh, what I'm trying to say is this. we got to take care of our bodies. You can feed yourself in the Spirit all day long, but there's times we got to kick bread away. There's times that we got to kick certain carbohydrates away. There's times we got to kick Coca-Cola away. That's the word of the Lord. Verse 5. The statement found approval with the whole congregation. See, he started with a situation and some murmuring. Sons with apostolic calling stood up and called the congregation together. They go through a process and they step into wisdom. In other words, the problem solving of what to do next. And it says, the whole congregation approved. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, Philip, Proconus, Nicanor, Timon, Paramenus, Nicholas, a proselyte from Antioch. And those and these they brought before the apostles, and after praying, they laid hands on them. So my point today, you know, laying on the hands didn't come just from the New Testament. We see that in the Old Testament. It's in Numbers and something else I looked up today in the Old Testament. It was part of the culture, Jewish culture. God had already had always had impartation. That was a foreshadowing back there to impart things. Amen? Timothy gets this letter wrote to him. I think it's in 2 Timothy. And it virtually says, don't lay hands on man suddenly. That ain't talking about fighting and hitting somebody in the jaw. We ain't supposed to do that. It's talking about don't lay hands on them prematurely. Make sense? I can look. There's a lot of people, I'm here to tell you, that's very gifted. 
But they're in constant turmoil internally and they've got a mask and religion has taught them how to function in brokenness. We want to walk out of wholeness. Mature sons, how you understand and you have no problem or if anything rises up in you towards your brethren is because you are mature enough that you have walked through the process of wholeness. And you're under lordship of Christ Jesus. If anything rises up, you put it in subjection. Then what do you do? You pull the wedge that's trying to be formed between you and your brother. Or you and your sister. They was murmuring. See, we got to get to the point where we address things. Acknowledge, hey, this is very real. We address it. How? Because we find a solution. And we don't just put somebody that's gifted in charge. I've seen some of the most talented musicians step on some of the stage uh, between here and the old place and even out in the community. And people didn't understand it in the beginning when I would say no to certain things and my wife would say no to certain things. They were gifted. But as soon as they unplugged, they didn't plug back up to they got on another stage. See, when you lead truly in our gateway, not of leading in worship, but releasing worship, it is prepared in the quiet time. It's the same thing of what Peter in the other level was saying. We've got to devote ourselves to prayer and studying the Word. They knew that their effectiveness corporately, their effectiveness in the community, in the region, would only come from what time they spent with God for the time that they sifted out the word. The time that the word sifted out to them. Out of them. Could heal them. Set them free. That they continually. Then they could penetrate. And keep a movement going forward. Responsible sons and daughters. So no matter what your role is. We know our role. Our positions in Christ Jesus. If we got to hold the door. We got to set up in the parking lot. If we got to set up in a ball field. If we got to go to Africa and sweep the dirt. Whatever God says, we got to just be obedient. Amen. One thing I asked you, I know there's growth coming. This is a house thing. It truly is. There's growth coming. And a lot of you have stepped up and I thank you. I thank you. There's two things I ask you today. Number one, what are you doing? Are you injected? Are, are, you, are you truly positioning yourself that you can see reconciliation go no matter if you're cleaning the toilet or preaching the Word? Are you overwhelmed in a certain area and you need to delegate some things? It's the two things. I say, and you can ask Shane, because Shane come in and him and Haley took more off me, but he leads his household, but she's heard me say it too. Uh, I've told them the whole time, don't come so busy and caught up with the, the administration side that you ain't getting filled up continually. First thing that happened with you was got full of the Spirit, didn't you, when you come here? Yep. All glory to God, that's the first thing that happened, right? Yep. He's been full and he's all, uh, full of wisdom. He's always problem solving. He's raised a lot of you up to help take and work some things behind the scenes. I give a I look forever saying we you was like one of the only men here. And then all of a sudden people started coming in. Dave come in and um, some others come in. Uh, Michael and Jody and you know Josh is here and, and many more. Now it's time for some of the ladies to step up. We need some help. Some of you are doing great jobs and you're in position. And a lot of people ain't here tonight, but they'll watch this. We need some people to step up. If we got growth that comes, how can we take and be have growth coming and seeing souls saved or whatever and we ain't got nobody in position to take and truly being hospitable? And I ain't talking about just welcoming somebody coming through the door. I'm talking about sending a letter out, sending an email out, taking loving on somebody. You know, um, just, there's so much more to this, y'all. So much more to this. This right here is the smallest percentage. Smallest percentage of what ministry is. Without the wine skin, you can have all the wine you want in the world and it just hits the ground. I'm talking about the wine of the Spirit. The drunkenness in the Spirit. The wine skin's family. 
and every son that's deployed, everyone, every son and daughter that's truly walking and growing and walking with God, they understand that their greatest honor is to serve. When, look, when it goes from serving as a burden to serving as a freedom and the joy you get out of it, you know you are, you're growing in maturity. All you got to do is step in. I can, I can remember, I can remember, not, not me, but I, I remember testimonies of different ones that's been a part of churches for years. And it was a burden. It was a burden. And it, there was no long lasting of certain things. But, and you get full of the Spirit and the intimacy you have with God, even when you feel wore out, God will continue to feel. Amen? Amen. Responsible sons and daughters.